right. Well, I am excited. How many wants to get started today? I, uh, I would like to pledge something to you to, uh, before I get started. Uh, as Mr. Nate just mentioned again, there are 8,630 promises in the Word of God for you and I. Most Christians know about three or four of them, you know. And the three or four that they know, like with his stripes I'm healed, and uh, I'm the head and not the tail, and I'm blessed to be a blessing, is not even working in their life. Today, I want to make a pledge that if you have unfulfilled promises in the Word from God to you, those promises, like with the stripes you're healed, or you're blessed to be a blessing, or unfulfilled prophecies, prophetic words that's gone out over you, I pledge to you that in the, this message today and the next two that I preach, that I will show you how it's possible to have these promises and prophecies fulfilled within a week. I don't do that too often. All right. How many brought a Bible today? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, 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 here's the deal. I found out that the gospel, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation, spirit, soul, and body. I'm going to preach the gospel to you today. So you will receive the what? The power unto saving you from whatever you've been missing out on. Amen. Say this with me. I am everything this Bible says I am. I have everything this Bible says I have. And I can do. I should do. And by the grace of God, I will do everything my Bible says. Today, well, at least in this case, within the week, I'm going to let this word become life in my life. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Go with me to Matthew chapter 17. How many has a... Uh, an analog version. Yeah. All right. How many in the house has a digital version of the Bible? All right. How many has it on your phone? Yeah. How many has one on the notepad or yeah. tablet? But let me see again that actually have a real analog version. Uh, well, thank you very much. I, I like the analog versions because, man, I can I can put yellow in it and I can put red in it and I can put my gum in it and, you know, I can do a lot of things with it. I really enjoy it. And I just, I just like the feel of it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, How many made it to Matthew 17? Amen. Here we go. And after six days, underline that, six days, that's where you get the hint that within the week, all right, after six days, Jesus takes the whole 5,000 up to the mountain. No. Jesus took what? Peter, James, and John. And brings them up into a high mountain apart. Now, why Peter, James, and John and not Mark and Luke and Judas and a few others, you know. Uh, is it because they were kind of his best buddies? Uh, did he just like getting along with them more? Uh, they, they talk sports together or something. I mean, wh why did they pick, why did he pick Peter, James, and John? How many would like to know the answer? Why? You know, has he got favorites or what? You know? All right, so after six days, everybody say after six days. Well, I want to go back and find out what happened six days ago. All right, so let's go back to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, let's start with uh, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan, someone that does not even have the promises. Talking about receiving the promises today. 
Here's a woman that the promise wasn't even given to. A woman from Can Canaan, she comes to the Lord and says, my daughter is previously vexed with a devil. And, and Jesus says, well, I can't take the master's bread and give it to dogs. Jesus loves me, this I know. He just called this woman a dog. I don't know what church you go to. But anyway, the woman responds, I'm offended. I'm never coming back to church again. No, she responds and says, Master, even the dogs get crumbs off the master's table. And he responds with said, man, that's, your, your faith, your faith is tremendous. Your daughter is, is healed from this hour, this hour. Within one hour, somebody that didn't even know there were promises yes. received a promise from God. And it wasn't even for herself, it was for her daughter. And I don't even see that the daughter was there. Not necessarily. Jesus cast out a devil and healed a daughter. Fulfilled a promise that she didn't even have before she approached in faith. Uh, six days ago. All right, from there, let me see, what happened from there? Well, then we get to verse 30. A great multitude came unto him. We don't know if these were some more dogs. We, we, I don't know the description of this multitude. It could have been uh, Jews. It could have been Canaanites. It could have been whatever. But a great multitude. They were lame. They were blind. And they were dumb. And they were maimed. And uh, they came down to Jesus' feet and he healed them. Listen to me. Jesus reached into the eternal unseen realm and brought down signs, wonders, and miracles, and brought it into the natural. The natural was a demon got cast out. The natural was somebody got healed. The natural was a lame man walked. The natural was, are you with me? A dumb person who, who can't speak, deaf person couldn't hear. They could now hear. Promises fulfilled. Everybody say, promises fulfilled. Then uh, Jesus called his disciples and said, now this multitude, not only did they get healed, but they stayed so long for the meeting, we need to feed them. And the disciples says, well, we don't have very much. Jesus says, what do you have? Well, you know the story. Now Jesus reached into the eternal unseen realm. And brought a sign and a wonder and a miracle and multiplied fish and loaves and fed thousands of people. Yeah. Disciples didn't even know that was a promise. Mm -hmm. But the promise was fulfilled. What are we finding so far? Promises of healing, promises of provision is being made manifest in the earth. Are you getting any excitement out of this? Well, then Jesus um, makes a statement about beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He's trying to say, now listen, there's going to be bad doctrine. Bad doctrine is going to be, well, you can't receive healing today. That's all passed away. You have to be careful of some of the doctrine that's preached to you because it's going to mess with your faith. You're going to think, well, you can't receive in a week. You can't receive in a month. That's probably not for another year. It's going to mess with your faith. Yeah. Well, I'm not, you're not good enough. You can't receive a promise from God. Well, the dog did. Mm -hmm. yes, the woman that wasn't a part of the clique. Yes, yeah. She received. Are you with me? Yeah. So beware of this leaven, this bad doctrine. And the disciples said, well, what? Uh, we didn't bring any bread. And Jesus goes, ah, God, man, did you already forget I fed the multitude with a few loaves? Yes. I'm not talking about that. Are you with me? Yeah. How quickly we see a miracle and then we're back into the natural and, and miss what's going on. Yeah. Now, Jesus makes a powerful statement, and I want you to see it here. Matthew... Uh, 
Matthew 16, 19, in context. Are you ready? And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, we jerk that out of context. This will be the greatest statement you have heard today. Jesus said, I cast out devils. I healed sick people. I miraculously provided. And I want to give you the keys so you can do the same thing that I did. Praise God. Listen, I, I, I envisioned this service and I thought people would shout at that moment. But I guess they've been listening too much leaven of Pharisees. Or, well, I heard that verse before. No, you haven't heard that verse before. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Jesus did it and said, now, I'll tell you what. I want to give you the key so you can do the same thing I'm doing. Amen. Oh, oh one's going to come and get the key. Yeah, that's the problem. It's exactly the problem. I'll give you the keys. All right, then Jesus goes on in this setting and says, now the way that I'm going to be able to do that is I have to die. I have to go to the cross. Are you with me? And, and, and this is how it's going to happen. Now, Peter, you know, a jump out of the boat kind of guy, immediately grabs hold of the keys and starts binding Jesus. Because I'll give you the keys. Whatever you bind on earth, bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, loose in heaven. So Peter says, I bind you, Jesus. You're not going to die. We're not going to allow that. And Jesus turns to Peter and says, oh, my brother. No, he says, listen, Satan, Lucifer, you savor not the things of God. Let's make it plain. Peter, you can't use the keys for that. You're not, I'm not going to give you the keys to do what you want to do. The, the, the keys are only for reaching into the eternal heavenly realm and bringing the will of God into the earth. You can't do it for your selfish reasons. I wonder how many Peters we've got in churches today that's running around binding and loosing everything they want. The desires of their totally wretched, wicked heart. And not knowing that God is saying, I'm not going to give the keys to just anybody. Mm -hmm. Are you getting anything out of this so far? Yeah. All right. So then Jesus uh, goes on and explains to them in verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Why did he then say it unto his disciples? <coughs> because Peter's using it for the wrong reason. So he has to give instructions. Everybody say instructions. <coughs> then Jesus uh, said to his disciples, if any man which could be any man, come, uh, will come after me, he has to, what? Deny himself. He has to take up his cross and he has to follow me. Jesus says not everybody gets the keys. Now we're living in a day where if you, if you go to any Bible preaching church, everybody believes they've got the keys. Thank you for your enthusiasm. What are we talking about? Unfulfilled promises. You know why unfulfilled promises? You don't have the keys even though you think you have the keys. You've been binding and loosening stuff that God says they're not the keys to my heaven. Because I would never allow that. Because I'm still God. Peter, you can bind Jesus all day long, but Jesus is still going to do the will of the Father no matter what you think you can do with your keys. Thank you for enthusiasm. Yes? Then he makes some comparison. Everybody say comparison. <clears throat> Whoever will uh, save his life will lose it. Whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. What's it going to profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? He compares the natural world with all of this stuff you want to bind to loose with your keys of another kingdom. Get to the top of your mountain, your sports mountain, family mountain, business mountain, sports mountain, whatever, whichever ones. There's keys to all of those mountains, but they're not the keys of the kingdom. 
You can, you can gain the whole mountain of one of these other ones and you'll lose your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's saying, look, you want that life? Well, there you go, but you'll lose it in the end. Yes. Yeah. But if you'll lay down that life, you can have the keys to heaven. And you can have the God kind of life. Who's he talking to? His disciples. Who's he talking to today? He's talking to anybody that'll listen. Then he starts prophesying. Jesus starts prophesying. He says, the son of man, how many knows he's talking about himself? The son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Jesus prophesies that he's going to come in the glory. Everybody say in the glory. And then he promises. Prophecy and promises. How many remember what I'm talking about? All right. He promises anyone who works in the kingdom. There's that tough word. I don't know if you noticed it. According to his works. The reward comes according to the what? Works. works, yeah. So he prophesies that. And then he goes on to prophesy this amazing thing and he says, and then there will be some, underline the word some, some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the some will see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. That's what he prophesies. Do you see that? Now, Jesus prophesies some. Many stop here, though, because this is the end of the chapter. Do you notice this is the end of the chapter? We close our book and say that Jesus will be back Possibly now it's getting to be 2,000 years. And so pretty soon Jesus is going to come back in the kingdom. Which was lunch provided by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. This is a chapter break, not a 2,000 year break. Did we finally make it through this last six days and now we're back to chapter 17? Are you ready? And it, verse 1 starts with what? And. Okay. <clears throat> and is trying to bring in the last sentence. Some of you will see the Son of Man coming in his glory and in his kingdom. And six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up to the mountain, apart, and was, what? Transformed, transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun, his raiment was white as the light, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, taking, talking with them. Well, the prophecy just came to pass. The, the prophecy was fulfilled within a week. No, the kingdom has already come. Because some that was standing there would not taste death until they seen it. And three saw it. I talk about the 5,000, 70, 12, and three. It's a good time to bring that in. What happened to the 5,000? Jesus fed them. They benefited from the glory that someone else had. The 70, they're the ones that got healed. And Jesus said, just go tell your story to somebody and bring somebody back to church. They benefited from someone else's ability to pull healing out of the sky and into someone's life. Yes? The 12, they said, I, uh, we want to serve you. We'll, we'll give up our lives. Peter said, I'll just lay me, I'll die for you. The 12 is the ones that want full-time ministry. Yes? yes? All right, so God says, sure, I'll appoint you. I'll make you ministers. Yes? Yeah. But then there's this thing called the three. 
the three. Peter, James, and John. You subtract three from 12, you get what? Nine. Three went up the mountain. Nine did not go up the mountain. Three rose up to a higher commitment and experienced the glory. They had their prophecy fulfilled. The nine did not have that pro same prophecy fulfilled in their life. Are you with me? The prophecy went to everybody. Yes? All right. <clears throat> the nine did not rise to a higher commitment. Now, <clears throat> Jesus took him into a higher mountain or a high mountain. The mountain is Hermon, Hermon. And it means, it's a Greek word, charam. And it means devote, consecrate, forfeit. Jesus could only take the three that was devoted, consecrated, and forfeited their life. If you lose your life, you'll find this heavenly life. Are you with me? Okay, so apparently there was some qualifications. Everybody say qualifications. The prayer focus for this month, I might make a plug for that, is God has a grading scale. The reason for the grading scale and the reason for tests is just simply to find out where you're at. You have to know if you have the keys or not. You have to know if you're at the bottom of the mountain or you're in the mountain. You can't get there from here if you don't know where here is. If you think you're somewhere you're not, you, you're lost. We just need to know where we're at in this scenario. Are we the 5,000 that will show up next week for buy a meal? Are we, are we the 70 that is telling our testimony to somebody in the city and bringing them to church? Are we the 12 that have said, I give my life totally for the ministry? I've left the secular world altogether. But the ministry is my life. I, I've laid down my life for the ministry. And then out of those that's laid down their life out of the ministry, have you ever been to the mountain? Have you ever been to the mountain? We have to know. We have to know. Now, the prophet talked about rise and arise. Two words in the prophetic outlook. I want to talk about that. All could have chosen to rise. The word rise means stand up and be committed, which was the qualifications that Jesus talked about. If you want to come up to the mountain, if you want the keys, well, then this is what you have to do. Here's the qualifications. So the three did rise to that. They said, okay, we'll forfeit our life. We'll do whatever you want us to do, Jesus. So he takes them up to the mountain. Everybody say, they're in the mountain now. All right, and let me uh, read this next verse to you. Verse 6, and it says, And when the three disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, there's the other word, Arise and be not afraid. Arise means to ordain. Arise means pioneer. Arise means to start a move of God. Arise means to, you can now become visible. Meaning to say God is going to lift you up and make you visible. Because he wants people to see and recognize you. The nine, God is not helping them become visible. That's why they're still trying to make themselves visible. That's why they're still self-promoting themselves. That's why they talk about how great they are to everybody else to try to convince everybody else how great they are. Instead of just humbling yourself, going to the mountain and saying, God, I'm just here. I just want to serve you. Then God will say, well, then I'll make you visible. See, one is God's doing, one is man's doing. How many wants to rise? Well, that means you have to rise to the commitment. It's, it's just not going to be, well, you know, I go to church, I believe, I believe the Bible. 
well, what are you doing about believing the Bible? You know, that's, that's the thing. All right, the call is still going out today. I'm preaching this message. We're still here. People still need to be fed, healed, delivered. God is still looking and saying, whoever will deny himself, come and follow me. I'll give you the keys of heaven. I mean, you, you can have the ability to at any moment just reach into the eternal realm and grab healing or deliverance and bring it to somebody. This is the quietest I've heard this house. Okay. All right. No more amens. I'm just moving on then. All right. Let's get, let's get out of the mountain, back to where everybody else is at. Huh? Verse 9, and as they came down from the mountain. Verse 14, and when they were come to the multitude, back to reality. Everybody say, back to reality. Yeah. I left church, back to work. And uh, they were come down the mountain. There came a certain man kneeling down to him saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's a lunatic. How many has lunatic children? Let me see uh, in your house. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's a lunatic, sore vexed. Oftentimes he throws himself into his bedroom and does nothing but text people in the middle of the night. And I brought them to your disciples. This would be the nine. Are you with me? Now, who were the nine? Uh, they didn't want to deny themselves. Sure. They wanted to be in the ministry when they wanted to be in the ministry, the way they wanted to be in the ministry. Yeah. And they were trying to impress everybody down, uh, down at the bottom of the mountain by handing out business cards. Okay. All right. I brought them to your nine disciples and they could not. They could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, well, they just need three more years of Bible school, so don't go hard on them. That's not what he says? Jesus said, <laughs> in as loving a tone as he could possibly muster up, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long do I have to put up with you? That's what the Greek literally says. I mean, how long am I have to put up with you? <clears throat> I healed this woman's daughter. I fed 5,000 people. Another time I fed 14,000 people. And, and plus the women and kids. Yeah. And the way some women eat, that, I mean, that's, that's a lot of food, all right? I pulled out of heaven. I healed lame people, blind eyes opened. I said, I give you the keys. All you have to do is just decide that's better than whatever the blazes else you've been doing. Yeah. Why would you not pick, take me up on this offer? Yes, sir. What in the world is on TV that's more important? How long do I... How long do I have to keep giving you this amazing offer from the throne room of Almighty God? And you not get it. Bring him to me. So he brings him to him. And he casts the devil out and heals him. Immediately. Cured from that very hour. Jesus addresses the problem. Why couldn't you do it? My message title today is why could we not? If we were faced with this, could we do it? You're still having trouble getting up when the alarm rings the first time. I mean, this is, this is far beyond just some of your major problems that you're still experiencing. <clears throat> Why could we not? Jesus addresses the problem. He says, it's your faith. Faith's your problem. Right. You're faithless. You're less than faith. The nine could not cure the son because of unbelief. Say that. The nine could not because of unbelief. 
belief. That's what he said. Jesus gave the answer. Why could we not? Unbelief. Another way of saying it, well, you don't believe. The nine had not experienced the glory yet. Uh, they know all the verses. They just haven't tapped into the power yet. How many has peace that passes all understanding? Oh, you know the trick now. I used to ask that and hands goes up. Oh, yes, of course. And then I would say, no, I didn't ask if you knew the verse. I'm asking how your day was yesterday. Did you have peace that passes all understanding? You have to know the difference between knowing the verse and knowing the God of the verse. If you know the God of the verse, you actually have the promise. If you only know the verse, you just believe the promise is possible. You have to know which where you're at in it. Amen? All right. Why could we not? Why could we not? How many can ask yourself that question? Why could I not? Why could I not? Well, uh, verse 19. Then the nine disciples left the church because they were offended by Bishop's message. Because he doesn't appreciate what we do do. He's always harping on what we can't do. No, the nine disciples were actually quite sharp at this moment in their time. The nine disciples came to Jesus and said, why could not we? That's the right response. I mean, that's the most intelligent question anybody could ask. You know, just simply go to Jesus and say, why, why couldn't I? I mean, are you afraid of the answer? Why do you want to go on the rest of your life not knowing the answer? <laughs> Come on, your kid gets sick or your kid gets demon possessed. I mean, I'd like to know the answer to this before it happens. Or if you're, you know, your wife gets demon possessed after coming back home from shopping or something, you know, you need to be able to deal with things. Why could I not? Come on, man. Why could I not prosper enough to give that woman the money she needed for that day? I'm going to meddle until I get to you. How many, how many has at least got a place where you could not do something? Here's the proper response. Jesus, why could I? I not. Not, why could he not? Yeah. Yeah. All right, why could we not? I got to move faster. And Jesus said unto them, because you need four more years of Bible school. No, it just simply says because of your unbelief. Now, unbelief is different than no belief. I already pr proved to you that there was a person that didn't even know about God's promises. They just came to Jesus. The woman just came to Jesus and said, help me. That's a, that's a mustard seed faith stuff. And she got her daughter healed. This is, this is the nine wise guys that are supposed to really know something. They literally saw food multiplied. <coughs> I've seen blind eyes open in front of me. I've seen lame people walk in front of me. You cannot convince me that that can't happen because I've already seen that happen. Yeah. These disciples saw it happen. Maybe you've only heard stories about it. But these guys saw it in front of them. Yeah. And then for them to unbelief? Unbelief? Because of your unbelief. Because I tell you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, be thou removed, cast in the sea. Nothing will be impossible for you. Right. Do you understand the context of this? I want to give you the keys of heaven so that you, you right now, here, can reach into the heavenly realm, pull down signs, wonders, and miracles. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason you don't do that is unbelief. Because all things would be possible if what? If you believed. Do you understand this is the problem? All right. 
Howbeit this kind goes not out by prayer and fasting. Now we have jerked that scripture out of context to the max. First of all, he addresses unbelief. We're all servants of God, and we've all had opportunities to fall short and miss it. Is that correct? Yes, Maybe in times past, we, we could do something. How many can think back and say, man, I believe God, and that, you know, that happened. And then, you know, two years later, Well, well, did you lose the keys? No. Um, I mean, maybe you had the keys because something was working. But what would you do? Lose them? Misplace them? Find a new set to another mountain? Oh or did you never have them to begin with? I don't know. <clears throat> have you grown lukewarm in your prayer, worship, and dedication? Can you come into service and go through the whole thing and not even mentally be engaged? Can you be raising your hands and not even think what you're doing? Can you be singing the songs and not even know who you're singing it to? Can you go through, can you quote the word, quote the word, quote the word, and have no revelation of it being supernatural and having power in it? Has persecution, cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, lots of other things, has it come in and choked out the word? What's happened? So God gives tests. Why? T t to show you what you know. Yeah. And then people get stupid and cheat on the test. What? <laughs> the teacher could care less. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're going to impress me by trying to cheat and convince me that you got the keys of the kingdom? I'll know if you're using them or not. Yeah. Come on. I mean, if you're hobbling, limping, and grumbling, and complaining, you don't have any keys. You're just a theoretical, think-you-know-it-all person that does not have enough sense to come before Jesus and say, why could I not? Yes? Yeah. How many just wants to humble yourself and say, why could I not? Yeah. All right. Jesus gives the answer to the I could not. Because of your faithlessness, our unbelief. If we had faith, nothing would be impossible. And then he says, this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Is he talking about a demon? That's what's taught. We might want to say, well, this, this is a bigger, harder demon. He's been there a long time and he has a right to be there. I mean, my problem is bigger than other problems. This, this, this demon's only coming out by prayer and fasting. I mean, a headache is a lot simpler than diabetes. Diabetes is a bigger demon than a headache demon. And then we get all super spiritual. We miss the point. What's Jesus talking about? He's, he's talking about this kind of belief. Unbelief. Unbelief is a belief. Now, this is my message today. Which belief do you have? Belief or do you have the belief of unbelief? Because they're both a belief. If you have unbelief, the only way you're going to get that out of you is by prayer and fasting. <laughs> How many has ever uh, seen a uh, speed limit sign 55? Yeah. How, many, how many have seen them? Yeah. Um, the, uh, now, how many would, how many, now settle down over here. <coughs> I'll have to cast that out of her a little while, but <coughs> how many would say that you believe that the speed limit 
in that zone is 55. How many, raise your hands if you believe that that speed limit is 55. See, some of you can't even raise your hands. Now, is it true that the speed limit in, from there to the next sign is limited to 55? How many would agree that that is, that, that is absolutely true? All right, now, how fast do you drive? Now, base 70, okay. Uh, what, what, how fast? 64. 64, because the police said 64, you will not get pulled over. Heard it right out of their mouth. This, no, listen, if by your action, you are a unbeliever. You have moved into a more powerful belief system than belief. You believe the speed limit is 55, but you choose to unbelieve that. And in this unbelief, you have put your 64 in place of it. Sure. Your 70 in place of it. Yes. And by that, you have made the word of God to none effect. And you do this every single day of your life in 8,630 areas of your life. God said, with his stripes I'm healed. But by your actions, you will unbelieve it. Because you'll be at the doctor, you'll be at the pharmacy, you'll be at your insulin shots, you'll be at your... You choose to unbelieve it. I mean, I believe that, but... But, but my sickness is harder than that. It's a bigger demon. No, it's called unbelief. Let me give you a list. Why could I not receive my healing? Unbelief. Unbelief. Thank you very much. Why could I not pay my bills? Unbelief. Why could I not have more than enough money to give? Help me out. Unbelief, if you if you was not sure. Why could I not raise my hands? In worship. Unbelief. Yeah, you're not shy. It's called unbelief. You chose to not believe. You're different. You're, you're, you're special. You're exempt from. Why could you not shout or dance or bow or kneel? Well, if I knelt, I couldn't get up. Unbelief. Why could I not witness... Why could I not evangelize? Tell me what the answer is. Tell me why this sanctuary is not full of people. Tell me why this sanctuary is not full of people. It's too weak yet. Tell me why you can't fill a chair in this sanctuary. Yeah. No condemnation. We need to know why. No, the Pharisees said, well, nobody wants God. No, bad doctrine. There's people crying out for God. There's people going to bed tonight crying out for a move of God. But because you believe nobody wants them, you're not reaching them. You're not talking to them. Oh, let me move. I'm sorry. Uh, why, can I, why could you not witness to the extent that someone wants to come to your church? I mean, why is someone not following me to church? When they see me, they've seen the Father. Why could I not fix my marriage? See, I, the, the, what I'm trying to get you to do is actually confess the sin. Okay, why could you not fix your marriage? Why could I not love my wife? Why could I not submit to my husband? Try it this. Why could I not submit to my husband? Now, I heard that there's a woman in the church and her daughter 
who now not only submits and obeys her husband and, and father. It just happened because I heard them say, we finally got him to do what we want. Is it too hard for you to get? Well, I'll submit to my husband as soon as he does what I tell him. I'll submit to Jesus when he finally does what I want him to do. I'll submit to the Father when he finally gives me what I want. It doesn't work that way. I'll tell you why you can't submit to God. It's unbelief. Why can't you submit to your husband? It's unbelief. Why can't you love your wife? Unbelief. Why can't you discipline your children? Unbelief. Why can't you remember the Sabbath? Why can't you walk away from your mountain? How come you can't walk away from the golden calf that you keep polishing and building? Tell me why. Unbelief. Unbelief. Uh, see, because you chose, even though I've said for how many years, get out of those mountains. Mm -hmm. You superseded it by what is called what? Unbelief. Yeah. I don't have to because I'm different than everybody else. I can handle it. I'm strong enough. I do it for God. No, you just rewrote the belief book. You're still in them. Why could I not flow in the gifts of the Spirit in public? Why can't I flow in the gifts of the Spirit here? See, Liam doesn't have any trouble. He just believes. Why can he flow in the gifts? Because he wants the keys. He just comes in here in pre-service prayer and wants the keys and goes into the heavenly realm and finds out what God wants to say and then he comes back in here and just flows in the gifts and brings, brings a word from heaven back into the place. Yeah. But the nine disciples back down here that know everything and are unteachable and I've heard that verse a thousand times, Bishop. You're not telling me anything new. No, I'm not telling you anything new because you're still not doing the thing that I told you. Why? Here's one. Why could I not not commit adultery? Oh, she was just too beautiful. No one could resist. No, it's unbelief. Why could I not not fall into fornication? Unbelief. Thank you. Why could I not find my keys this morning? Why could I not find those shoes to go with that dress this morning? This is all unbelief, friends. How many wants to fix this? <clears throat> Mark chapter 9. I only want to go to Mark chapter 9 to quote this. Don't, don't, you don't have to go there. But Matthew leaves out this. Mark adds it. How many knows the four Gospels hit it from different directions? Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto the man, you know, the man that came to Jesus and said, why could I not cast out my son? Okay, cast out my son. And some people need to do that if he's 37 years old, still living at home. All right. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Correct? And Immediately the father of the child cried out with tears, Lord, I believe. Help mine unbelief. He's got two things going on. He's got believing going on and he's got unbelief going on. He didn't ask Jesus to help him believe. He already believed. He said, I need help in this kind that comes not out but by prayer and fasting. Yeah. This unbelief belief. Help me with my unbelief. Help me with this detestable, ugly thing where I decide not to do that because I want to do something else. Uh, yeah. That kind comes not out but by prayer and fasting. That attitude that I believe it but I just don't believe it only changes with prayer and fasting. How many is excited about this? Yeah. Help my unbelief. So, no condemnation. I'm just asking that all of you would just be humble enough to say, my God, help my unbelief. 
help my stupidity of constantly doing this stuff. From the speed limit sign to, to, to the marriage, to the discipline, to the family, to the submission, to the tithes, to the offerings, to the church attendance, to the witnessing, to the... God's word has something to say about everything. Why would you want to trade that for something in the world that you think you can make better? That is insane, my friends. Lay it down. Press into the mountain of God, the mountain of God, where the glory is, where the Father speaks and you fall on your face. But when you come out of that mountain, you're going to look different. You're going to talk different. You're going to act different. You, you don't care about things that you used to care about once you get there. The scripture for the year is, you've heard me say it, but here it is. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're, we all have to do evangelism, and the only reason that we don't is because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief, thank you. Then he said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Believe, baptized, saved. Correct? Correct. Believe, as you know, is true, just like the speed limit sign. Baptized means let up on the accelerator. Bapt baptized means do what it says. Yeah. Yes, sir, submit. Yeah. And then you'll get the manifestation. Sure. Okay. Why don't I have the promise fulfilled? You're leaving out this baptized part. Mm -hmm. Lord, I believe, but help my foot. Lord, I believe, but help me. Get up in time so I don't have to speed. The unbelief go, keeps backing up six days. Sure. Yeah. Right. He that believeth not, here it is, this believe not is unbelief. This is the one we're talking about. I believe what God's word is, set, is true. With his stripes I'm healed. But then I have to act on it. Yeah. I have to be committed to it and I have to be dedicated to it. And I have to do what he said about it. I have to eat the right things. I have to not eat the wrong things. Yeah. I have to call on the elders of the church, no matter how humbling it is. I have to ask for a prayer of faith because I don't know how to do one right now. I need a believer to lay hands on me so I can recover. Yeah. You have to do it. Yeah. Rather than believe not, I choose not to do it because I think I can get a quicker way. Believe not. We have to deal with this believe not. How many wants to deal with this believe not? How many would raise your hands and say, I got a few believe nots in my life. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> if you believe not, you will be damned. If you believe not, 55. You, you will drive 70 even after you get a ticket or two. Yeah. Sure. Isn't that true? Yeah. If you believe not, you'll compromise your marriage, your family, your children, your finances, your dedication. You, you, you'll never change. Yeah. Unless you do with the, deal with the believe not, you are damned. You will be the same next week. You'll be the same next month. You'll be the same next year. And you still won't bring anybody to church 10 years from now. Because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. I can't get a job. No, you won't get one next week, next year. Probably ever in your life. Because you're 5,000. You live on alms. You live off somebody else's faith. And you think that's spiritual. Jesus said to the 12 and the 70 that do use their faith to get a job and prosper and, you know, be the head and not the tail and above and not beneath and have more than enough to give. God will use them to bring the glory to you. But don't let, act like it's your faith. 
Don't act like it's your faith. You're just a dog that's getting crumbs off the table. How's that sound to you? But even that dog pressed in and said, I want, I, I want to press in. Yes. God included her in. You can go from dog to ruler. Yes. You can go, go to the big dog on the porch if you want to. But if you're going to run with the big dogs, you've got to get off the porch and go do something. The invitation goes out. You want the keys of the kingdom? Well, don't stay where you're at. Yeah. Decide to make the change. Yes? yes? These signs will follow them that what? Believe. I could give you a list of the signs that follow them that believe not. But then you probably already got that list. Yeah. It, it's called the... Fruit of the flesh. Sure. You can go through that list. Too. All, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, and, you know, all that stuff. All right, I got to get on, and here we go. We got an answer. Prayer and fasting. Oh, like one minister says, it's come to that. <laughs> Phew. I was hoping, Bishop, you'd come up with something other than that. I don't know. That's, that's it. Paul to the Ephesians said it this way, praying always with all prayer. Praying twice a month on the prayer call and on Sundays with, with the prayer, help me Jesus. It could be why nothing's changed. Sure. Praying always with what? All prayer. How often do you pray? Totally. Tell me how long you pray. See, that doesn't mean, you don't even believe that, do you? Come on, you, you don't. You don't believe that. What do you mean pray all the time? Well, see, if, if you have to be in the fetal position with your eyes closed, you probably can't. But Jesus is there with a hungry mob, and he just looks up into heaven, and he's in, in the heavenly eternal realm. All prayer. What kind of prayer? Oh, there's more than one? Yeah, okay. Let me tell you what they are. Repentance prayer, supplication prayer, petition prayer, thanksgiving prayer, intercession prayer, other tongues prayer, and agreement prayer. The first one is repentance prayer. That would be like confess your I could not. I'm leading into the altar call just so you know. The first prayer you should pray is, Lord, help my I could not. Help my unbelief. I'm, I'm, confess it. I, I'm sorry. I could not. And you don't want to, I could not again. The second one is supplication. Humbly ask for help. Help my unbelief. Like, uh, help me figure out how to cast this thing out of my life. Supplication. I, I, I can't do it on myself. If I was able to do this, I would have done it. I can't do it. So I asked for help. An elder pray for me. My God, prophet, prophesied to me. I mean, you know, bishop slap me. I, I will do that if you'd like me to. Whatever. You, what, however I can help you. Petition. Petition is different than supplication. Petition is asking for a specific thing. It's like, Father, give me wisdom in this. Give me wisdom to, to apply this to every area of my life so that isn't just a you know, a peel off one thing to a time. Understanding, give me another opportunity. And I'm going to believe this time around. Give me the power of the Spirit of God. Give me the keys of the kingdom. You're asking petition, something specific. Thanksgiving then is followed up with Thanksgiving. In other words, you say, thank you. I've asked. You believe that you receive it and you will what? Have it. So... Um, just receive it, go forth. That's Thanksgiving. Intercession. Pray for someone else because they could not either. Yeah. Why do you intercede for somebody else? Well, they, they got a bunch of thou could nots just like you got thou could nots. Mm -hmm. Do you now have compassion for their thou could nots once you realize you could not? Yeah. How many would like to see all the thou could nots start doing the coulds? Yes. Do you understand how that would change the entire church? Don't tell your husband what he can't do. Pray for him that he can do something. Yeah. Amen. 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 Other tongues. 
when you know not how to pray as you ought. Yes, the Holy Spirit helps you pray, gives you utterance. Now, how, how often is it that you don't know what you should pray? Always. Well, that would, that would be a lot more than you think yeah, at the always. moment, right? <laughs> and then prayer of agreement. Don't forget this. Don't try this whole thing on your own. Some of you should not even try it at home. Start it at church first with somebody else around you where it's a safe place. Did you get anything out of this today? Yes. Fasting, I know you don't want to deal with that one. <clears throat> Although I do have a 40-day fasting schedule up here that you can put your name on. It will start on the uh, 13th of uh, March and it will lead up 40 days will lead up to Passover. It's three-day Esther fast only. But fasting somehow is another thing that Jesus said that would uh, deal with this unbelief. How many, how many knows that you got this big demon of unbelief in you and you'd, you'd like to cast it out? Yes. All right. So it, it, comes by, it comes out by what? Prayer. You know the kinds of prayer. And fasting. What's fasting? You, you just got to shut the flesh off. The flesh is your biggest enemy. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And just, you, you just, fasting helps you say, I don't care what you want. Yeah. Yes, I would rather go to the mountain of God and get the keys of the kingdom. So shut up. Yeah. Fasting helps you do that. Yeah. And then you shut down some of those things that your flesh wants and replace it with your Bible. Right. Replace it with the prayer time. Replace it with these things. Yeah. And pretty soon you'll have the power to cast this I could not out. Now, the one thing that I did not mention to you was that Jesus sent out a daily devotional about experience the glory. And everyone received that daily devotional. Three really read it seriously every day made the confessions every day, and prayed those prayers every day. The nine, however, they missed a few. One, two, skip a few. They kind of read them and thought that was good, but they didn't take it seriously and never did experience the glory. Even though they know just about everything, every topic about the glory, they've not yet had it. So I suggest, what do I do about that? Well, <laughs> go reread them then. Yeah. Yeah. Go back and say, I'm going to read these and confess these and bleed until these things take me to the mountain of God. Yeah. Okay, if you deleted them, then just sign up again. You can do it right there on the website. It's right there. Experience the glory. Put in your name and email and you can start getting them if you deleted them. Yes? Yes. Go on, uh, possibly if you still have them, go on a, a Netflix Experience the Glory binge and read 20 of them in one night on your living room floor and just go through them and pray until the glory fills the room. Do whatever it takes to make this change today. Faith comes by what? Hearing by the word of God. The first hearing is logos, just yeah. hearing it in your ear. Rhema, the second hearing is hearing it in your heart. I can give you the logos, I can get it to your ear, but if, if you felt something go deeper, that's when God said something to you. That's when he took his finger and pushed it into your heart. When your father gets home. If you think Bishop is hard, wait till your father gets home. He's going to let you know that he's serious about all these things. How many wants the keys? Yeah. Just close your eyes for a moment. Just think about this. At any moment, you just decide you want this more than anything else. You can reach into the eternal realm. Reach into heaven itself, the God kind of life where there's signs, wonders, and miracles. And if you're in line with the will of God, you can, you can right now pull that down out of heaven and into the natural. Whew. 
Somehow I think this is the God kind of life. Somehow I think if I, if I would lay down my life, this is really the life I want to find. I really don't think I want anything else in this life more valuable than that. Father, I present your people to you today. I believe everyone in the house wants to see that change. And so we all cry out together. Help us. Help our unbelief. Uh, Father, I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears pop open, lame people walk. I've seen some miraculous things. But Father, if I've grown weary and I, Lost the keys. I want to see him again. I want to see him again today. I want to see him again today. We love you. and We worship you. Online, if you just want someone to agree with you or you just want to type it and say, I confess my I could not. We will pray with you. If you're in your house and you just want to come to the altar and just say, I, I want to come up higher. I want to rise today. I want to rise out of my chair, out of my, I could not. And I just, I want to press into the mountain. I, I think, Jesus, you're still making it available to us. So I want it. I want it. I have changed my mind about it. And now, Father, help me change my action about it. If that's you, feel free to come. Thank you, Father. Uh, do you have that song that, Reverend Connie, uh, we'll play that song. And so everybody in the house, if you just want to come, we'll just allow you to do so. We started out today saying that there's promises that God has for you. He wants you to walk in health and prosperity and peace and joy. It just starts with us realizing we don't have what we really desire. I keep fighting voices Go ahead, turn that up. Come to the altar. <laughs> 